Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. Today we have a little comic of the month and it's covering the comics of May, which was five weeks worth of comics if you didn't know. So all you cheeky fuckers out there, he's got a good dose in our comics this month. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's been quite a few things out there. You know, there's been new Hellblazers. Yes. Oh my god, new Hellblazer. But I'm not here no, to Doctor talk Strange about as well. No, that was no, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is boss. Some, some man. He's he's pretty good. Oh, aye. But I'm I'm not here to talk to you about men today, Mario. You're not here to talk to me about men. For what? Once, Hold actually. on, if I fell through a pal- parallel universe and I found a straight James. Well, no, not quite. But I'm here to tell you that this month I'm not going to be talking about male male comic book characters. Oh. Oh, today what? I'm going to be talking about Mother Panic. Whoa, hold on, Mother Panic. DC Young Animal imprint. What? Mother Panic. Oh yeah, yeah, Young that, Animal. That that yeah. exact same one. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, she's good. She's good. Have, have you read any? I've Mother got Pan- all the issues there. I'm just waiting on one quiet day to have a like 500 comic reading session, which has near enough happened before. Well, Mother Panic is done by Jodie Hauser and Tommy Lee Edwards. Where to start on it, really, because I'm going to be talking about Mother Panic issue 7. Yeah. Which is continuing a story. Was out, uh, I believe, last week. Yeah, yeah. So I've just caught it on the tail end, yeah. and it's 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 pretty good. Um, now, as far as I can, I'm led to believe Mother Panic is set in Gotham. Yes. And they make subtle hints to Batman very subtle hints to Batman, and how Mother Panic isn't actually scared of Batman. She just doesn't like what to run into him, ever. Yeah. She's not your usual superhero. She's... Her name's... Her real name's Violet Page, and she's basically just trying to live her life, really. But she... You know, she goes about as Mother Panic, and Mother Panic is a no-nonsense woman. Like, she takes... No shit from anyone, and I am here for it. The artwork very reminiscent of um, Alias Jessica Jones. Yeah, yeah. I feel, uh, and I really kind of like that. A lot of people, some people don't like it. Kind of a little, a little almost plain but murky. Yeah, and it really adds to the sort of grittiness that Mother Panic is. She is like, in essence, she she can you could compare her to Batman. She's very dark. She's very. To the point, she's got no issues giving someone a brain injury. She is absolutely fine with kicking fuck out of people. And in issue seven, we're sort of t- we're treated to the scene of a double murder, a double homicide. And the only witness to that is a young seven-year-old girl. And when this murder happens, Mother Panic Violet decides to go and talk to her. Now, this young lassie, you know, she's she's been under a lot of stress because the, the the press are talking to her, you know, like literally everyone in their gran is trying to figure out what this lassie's seen. And Mother Panic decides to go talk to her about it. So when she goes, the young girl hugs her and Panic is just like, oh, I'm sorry, like... I need you to tell me what happened, and I need you to let me know so she can do something. And this this book kind of gives me a, a, a new semblance of her. In other books, it's sort of kind of slightly minorly hinted at that she she doesn't... She's sort of seen as a killer, Mother Panic. She's yeah. seen as somebody who dishes out very harsh justice. And the young girl tells her, obviously, that he'd seen, seen that there was a big man in a cloak basically who'd shot the two people effectively what happens and transpires from there is when Mother Panic gets ready to leave the young girl says to her are you going to kill him and then we get a flashback to a previous you know sort of scene where Panic is sort of like I I wanted to kill him, I couldn't kill him can't kill him and then she leaves which transpires into this sort of new, very Azrael kind of thing, where it's almost like Violet is 
has been brainwashed to do this. She's very Black Widow as well. Like, she's been made to be this way. And I think this is really a story that's going to continue to branch out, you know, more and more. Uh, we see her come face to face with a nun. Uh, no, to be honest, you can only assume that it's Violet, really. And, you know, she's pointing a gun at this nun. And the nun's saying, oh, you remember everything we've done to you? You remember us cutting you open? Do you remember how much it hurts? Trying to get us to shoot. Trying to get a reaction at her, and then she can't do it. She puts the gun down, and then all you hear is the nun say, "Yeah, because she can't do it because we've cut that part of her out. Her will is ours." So we're starting to see a story with Mother Panic of, is she her own woman, or is she something else? Is she a weapon, like Azrael, yeah. like Black Widow? And this is the kind of thing that you don't see often, really, in comic books. I find that story of a character who's potentially been made to be a certain way and you do get it with like you know characters like Black Widow and Azrael who were brainwashed or you know um, you know groomed from a young age to be that way but Mother Panic is a very different kind of superhero I, I personally love the touch of humanity in her that she is obviously under so much stress of what she's doing you know she swears all the time she swears like a tripper she you know, she will dish out serious justice to people and she will stop at nothing to get what she needs to be. But that little twist at the end is more like, is she like that because she wants to do that? Is she a vigilante because she wants to be a vigilante? Or is she a weapon? Has she always been a weapon? And are these little good things that she's trying to do, like solve this murder to find vengeance for this young girl? Is that her trying to break away from that has she broken away from it or is she a sleeper agent basically the the actual issue itself doesn't give a lot it's it, it feels more like a filler issue yeah. i mean it's it's issue seven it's just after volume um, issues one to five so the first volumes came out so you know totally read the first volume because the first volume is so good. if you're looking for something different Mother Panic is where to go. In fact, any Young Animal thing, really, is what you want to be looking at because Young Animal has this weird sort of... I read Young Animal, right? Anything from Young Animal. You know, Doom Patrol. Shade the Changing Girl. Um, at Cave Carson. Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye, Mother Panic. I read that and I'm thinking, see, when I read them, do you know what I get? I get this sort of... Was this what comics were like when they first started? You know, something a retro vibe. new and fresh and when I read them I feel like I'm reading something completely new, completely authentic. It's like it's like being reintroduced to comic books. Yeah. It's why I love uh the young animal stuff. Because it's not scared to be a wee bit quirky. So I would definitely encourage anybody to read young animal stuff. If you're not already reading it, definitely give it a look. It, I'd say Young Animal is a good place to start for anybody. They're adult, and they're trying to be realistic but not realistic at the same time. It's not scared to be to cross the lines. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I think that's definitely where Mother Panic's going. I really like Mother Panic. Read it. Why are you not reading it, Mario? Why haven't you read it? <sighs> it's finding a time, James. Is it from my normal stuff that I read and. Here, here's the thing. I've got quite a few series that I've not actually read. Like I think I mentioned in a previous show that we done, I've got the Harley Quinn Rebirth stuff. Not read any of it. But uh, yes, yeah. So uh, Young Animals is is a different imprint from DC. Uh, they had a kind of thing with Vertigo, which well is al- almost but vanished now. But uh, when I was at New York Comic Con last year and sat in for the DC Young Animal uh, panel, uh, there was a lot of n- new ideas thrown about and stuff. Uh, I believe the tagline was Dangerous Comics for Dangerous Humans. So it's a little bit wacky stuff going on. Like I said, I've still to read a lot of this stuff, and uh, there was mention of Muller Panic being set in Gotham, and I almost tease of, oh, well... Is she going to run in into a certain uh, pointy-eared vigilante? Ooh. I think she could square up to Batman quite easily. She 
she has something that a lot of other characters don't have, and it's it's natural anger. It's like she's harboring a lot of anger, like Batman, and she's not scared to get her hands dirty, like Batman. Yeah, I would love to see her square up against Batman, and to be quite honest, I would love to see her kick his cunt in. No, she doesn't have. The thing is about her, she's no big on gadgets and stuff like that. She's all fist. She's all fisticuffs. She's all kneeing people in the balls. She's all just going right in for it. And I quite, I think that's quite refreshing actually. She's a hardcore vigilante, and but well, you know, with this twist at the end of this issue, it's is she yeah. or is she something more? Which, if that's set in Gotham, I could believe because how many of Batman's characters have been brainwashed by? Quite a few. Quite a few. I could totally see that. And I really like her. I, she, she's really kind of grown on me. Reading issue seven just moves on. And I mean, because the first volume's done, it's probably trying to do its second sort of story arc now. Yeah. Really kind of going into that. So I'm definitely going to reread them all back to back and see if I pull anything new out. But definitely read Mother Panic. It is good. It's It's very different to what you would expect. And quite... Quite funny. It's got it, it. It's got a dark humor in the level of how she handles it. Like her answer to everything is "fuck this." Like it, she, you know, "fuck" is her favorite word, and I am fucking here for it. I love it to death. I love her to death. She's going to be the one. Mother Panic for IJ Two DLC. Thank you. Uh, what and would you rate it? So far, I'm going to. I'll get an eight. I think I want to see a crescendo to Mother Panic. You know, I think with all the young animal stuff, we will lead into a, a big thing. Maybe that's a payoff down the line. If it's set in Gotham and everything, maybe have I a throwaway issue with a appearance of Batman. But they haven't mentioned if this is in the current DC universe, have they? Or is it, is it no, a different Earth? Well, they're still trying to keep it very much its own thing. So I don't think... I think while they've stated, oh, it's in Gotham... I don't really recall them stating when or what universe it's in, because as we know, DC has many universes and it's multiverse. But I, d- I definitely don't think it's Rebirth or anything like that. I think it's, I think it's definitely trying to be its own thing. And I think if Batman comes into it, it's not going to be Batman Rebirth. Do you yeah. know what I want to see, actually, though? I mean, did you hear about Gerard Way's apparently cancelled Arkham comic? No. Have you never seen the pictures? No. He'd done actual images of the characters, and Batman looked like a proper Batman. Uh, the Joker was... To be fair, the Joker was the only one I wasn't too big on. He was sort of like an angsty teenager with, like, long hair, and but he had the knife. Y- you've seen the Joker in Injustice 2? Yeah. The long hair? He yeah. looked like that. Oh, okay. Um... Two Face wore a Gestapo outfit, like a leather Gestapo outfit. Had a Gestapo hat and he had his coin. And his face was like the blue again. Um, Mister Freeze as well. You know he was going to incorporate all these characters, but it never happened. And I would very much like to see Gerard bring that Batman because I would have been living for that comic book. It was truly spectacular looking. DC didn't pick it up, but I think now that he's doing Young Animal, and it's doing quite well for itself, he might get that chance, and you know Gerard, Gerard will go to really dark places, you know, he's not afraid to go there, and that's what Batman needs, but honestly, it's fantastic, like, I I love Young Animal, I hope that they get more access to the DC Extended Universe, don't overflow it, because I think... Young animals very much like, you know, the runaways. Yeah. Marvel's yeah. runaways. You know, they're, they're, they're the outcast heroes. They're the freaks. But they're amazing. And, you know, I really like that. There's a lot of good stories in there. Um, Doom Patrol especially. You know, I'm really going to just get them all and have a good sit down and have a good look at them. If you liked uh, Danger Days, The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys comic, I, I totally don't see why you wouldn't like young animal stuff. So definitely look into that. Or um, Umbrella Academy, that was sort of like what that Batman was going to be like, Umbrella Academy. Um, quite dark, quite scary, but 
very serious house. Nice. But anyway, enough about me. Nice. What have you been reading, Mario? Uh, well, this one crept in with the last day of the month, James. Last day of the month? Yes. It was going to be... My pick was going to be Batman Brave in the Mold, which is issue 23. Swamp thing. Swampy, I know, but oh. this one just edged out. And I mean just edged out. There's a lot of stuff that happened in this. And it is Secret Empire issue 3. Uh, Going <sighs> back to Secret Empire? Yeah, it's really good. Uh, like I, I, <laughs> It's one of those big events where I'm actually really, really looking forward to the next issue. Some of them, you know yourself, they get a couple issues in, a couple big things happen, and then it just like fizzles off. This right now uh, is issue 3 out of 10, which is quite a big event uh, compared to the, your other ones, which are maybe 6 or 7. This issue is Nick Spencer, writer, artist, Andrea Sorrentino, and Rod Reese, which honestly, it's still dark and beautiful like the previous issues. Starts off, James, with this image of Steve Rogers. There's a lot of speculation online with people saying that uh, it's possibly that the Hydra Cap is like a clone or something, but I think this is possibly in Steve's mind. Like, it's done and every time you see Steve in these kind of little scenes, he's got this kind of blue hue around him. He's he's a pure Captain America that we know and love. Whenever we saw bad guys, I think it was in issue one or two, at the tail end of it, the enemies, I think it was Cobra or something, I can't remember, were had this red glow to them. So I'm thinking this is maybe the part of Steve's mind creeping back. Almost like what uh, Peter Spider-Man done. Uh, Peter just slowly coming back into into power. Basically, he's hiding in his mind somewhere, you know. Yeah. So that's 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 my what I think. It's it's the what the Steve Rogers that we have as Hydra Cap is evil. He's pure Steve evil, or as uh, Rocket Raccoon says in this one. Stevel. 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 Yes. Oh, good old Rocket. Yes. Uh, there's actually a couple fun funny names. Uh, I think it's Captain Hydrapus is one of them or something. But uh, yeah, the first uh, the title starts off with Rocket, Raccoon, Groot, and Peter Quill going to Baby Groot, no less. Baby Groot, because that's the thing now. They're going to the kind of like the heads of the Kree, the Skrull, the uh, Brood, all, all in all these races, and they're asking for help. They're they've, they're showing Earths and play our greatest heroes, uh, the greatest villain now. Uh, there's a shield up, stopping anyone getting in or out. And what do they what do they do? They they just tell them a basically like big fuck you. And they actually say death to the earth, then uh hail what is that again? Oh, Hydra. So it's just like, oh well, fuck yous. You the heroes are dying. The heroes have fucked us over. Fuck yous. And it it's getting pretty grim. Like all the heroes in space are at the edge of it right now. They are suffering. Yeah, I mean the thing I get for Secret Empire is just how void of hope it is. And it sounds bad, right? Because a lot of people didn't like Captain America being evil. Yeah, a lot a lot of people. But do you know something? It's like you've always said, you kinda keep reinventing the wheel. You've got yeah. to, you've got to do something different. You know? And I am I really like the Marvel universe when there's no hope. Yeah. Because Marvel's all about, like, we can do it together if we work together and we're friends and we're teammates. And I like that, but no, the guy who tells them all that stuff is completely against them. And it's just, you see some of the most arrogant heroes, some of the bigger heroes just gone, well, what's the point? And I like that. Because no, it's like, you know, all the cards are on the table. We don't know what's happening. 
And if Steve does come back... How's everyone going to handle having him be an absolute dick? But here's the thing. They've already killed off uh, Rick Jones and Bucky. And and several others that they've mentioned, but they've not really mentioned who. So this this is a thing of... Right, is the Cosmic Cube going to rewrite the universe? And then this didn't exist. That's what that's what I think. Part of me hopes not. Marvel keep falling back on the cosmic cube. Well, they've they've not used it in a while. Well, the last time they used it was the cancerverse story, the Thanos imperative. Yeah, that was the last time. It's like it's this whole thing where you know the cosmic cube taking the body of a young child and. You know, it seems to be that the Cosmic Cube is the answer to all questions and the cause of all problems, sometimes. Mm. I w- see see where a story like this, the aftermath is what you come for. You know, the heroes can sort it all out. They can do all that. But I don't... This doesn't deserve a happy ending. I, I don't think it does, but I think it's going that way. Uh, the last... Maybe three times I can remember Cosmic Cube being used was uh, the Avengers standoff, which is all about them using the Cosmic Cube to rewrite uh, villains' minds and stuff. Uh, as I said, the Thanos Imperative. And then previously was Ed Brubaker's Captain America, which, if you've not read, is absolutely phenomenal. It's basically a street-level comic, like a street-level hero comic. It's perfect. And it's all about Red Skull uh, causing as much chaos to power this cube to get the last one over on Steve Rogers. Like, that. that's, like, three times. Uh, look at it. the Infinity Gauntlet that's been used for the incursions with the whole ma- uh, the combinations before Secret, uh, Secret War. Like, it's been used a handful of times in New Avengers and stuff, so... Like, it, I wouldn't say it's ov- they're overusing their power items, but it's it's a nice throwback. And if they're going to use it to rewrite the universe to something happier, then, yeah, maybe after that, don't touch it for a few years. Same with the Infinity Gauntlet. But, uh, yeah, back into uh, Secret Empire, and we've got a kind of bleak scene here. Some villain has got a bomb in her heart and she's ready to kill off hundreds of civilians. But as we find out, the bomb goes off and it's a simulation ran ran for the younger heroes who are are being taught a hard lesson here. They're being told, oh, if you can't do something one way, look for another way. There's always another way without killing someone. And they're told, well, if you look at it, all these heroes have been killed. You are, are the new generation. You are what's left of the heroes. So maybe start thinking outside the box. Which is pretty fucking grim to tell your younger heroes. Like, we've, we've dealt this way for... We've done it this way for years. And it's not worked. It's really not worked. This is... We are fucked over so much right now because of what we've done. Maybe you need to lead this new generation into something else. Now that's, like you're saying, there is actual no fucking hope there. That is grim as fuck. And it puts it puts a lot of pressure on the younger characters, which we've only seen in maybe a couple of, the last couple of years. Miles Morales being your main one. Uh, you've got... Vi- young girl vision Ironheart. you've got iron heart as well which is ve- very recent so this is <laughs> this is the the to, to, to quote right? dread this is the deep end it is the deep end and like i say you're tearing this you're tearing these kids and teenagers by the way world's fucked you're fucked we are fucked the only way we're not the only way we're going to be unfucked is if you think of something else because we can't, you know, and that's that's a really strong thing to put onto some young characters. I think that's this is where the story's getting really, really scary. Because we don't know where it's gone. 
this is the world that Hydra built. Yeah, and they, they it's run not it nice. Now. It's not nice, and no one can come and save these people. No one, unless somebody, dis- unless unless Thanos comes with the Infinity Gauntlet, you know, unless that happens, they're fucked. Y- they're, they're pretty much fucked. You know, I I just totally think this should end by you know the Silver Surfer coming in with Galactus and just fucking decimating everything. Let that happen. <laughs> That's the only time I'll let Galactus eat a planet. <laughs> like, st- do you know what? This planet's a bit spoiled, Galactus. I don't mind. Brilliant eater. <laughs> Great work. Uh, well, you never know. The stranger things have happened in big events, so. Well, this is a huge event. I know. This is this is this is. Like Marvel basically came out and said that after this, there's not going to be a major event for what eighteen months. Now, the last maybe s- six months, there's been like three or four m- like kind of tie-in events. So. Well, Marvel do spoilers with big events, and this is the biggest. Yeah, that's it. I mean, this is the sort of biggest for me since Civil War, or you know, like um, I'd say Secret War. Like that was Secret a War. major event Let's because go. that was a we've got all our toys in the one pram. Now we're just going to pick the ones that we want to play with, and that's that's our new universe going forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like because they're using Old Man Logan because hell the movie and everything. Like they they tied that in very nicely in time, so uh, Wolverine's still dead. But yeah, we've got this slogan from another timeline. We've got Miles Morales for the Ultimates. We've got Reed Richards from the Ultimate Universe as well, who's a little bit of a cock, shall I say? He's playing the part of Reed Richards to wind Ben Grimm up to kill Doctor Doom. Well, I mean, you don't get anybody more flaccid than Reed Richards, to be honest. Let's be real, but. I mean, if you look at Marvel's history of events, you know, you had the Secret Invasion with the Skull, you've had Civil War, you've had, you know, Secret Wars, you've had, you know, um, Battle Worlds, you've had... Yeah. S- Marvel do spoil you with events, whereas DC don't really. And I think that's where... That's good that they're taking a break after this. I, th- I think they should have taken a, a maybe a two-year gap after uh, after Secret War, but then that led right into Civil War too, which... Did tie up a couple of things and whatever going forward. So, but it's but it's still that was that was maybe not even six months ago. Six, uh, Civil War two. I mean, I like the shock of one big event and then it ends and then you're just like, oh, that event's finished and then it sucker punch it leads into a bigger event. I don't yeah. like that. But with Marvel, it just seems to be one event leads into another to another yeah, to another. Yeah, the, the def- then you've got your character events like the Clone Conspiracy, which was a great event, but I feel it was very forced. It it could have been a part of the Amazing Spider-Man run, but they wanted a bigger platform for it, which I understand because it involved a lot of older characters being reborn, well, revived almost, and uh, stuff going from there. A lot, a lot of good stuff came out from it. I'm not going to spoil what came out of it because you need to read this. Mm. Like a lot of character events are good. But when it's when you're getting a lot, like a lot of events, I think Clone Conspiracy kind of overlapped a little bit with Civil War, if I remember right, and it's just maybe too, just maybe too much. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm all, I'm all for uh, X Men having an event, say a twelve part crossover between all the X X titles, mm-hmm. something like that. That's nice. Because it's a tie in to each one. It's like a mini Intrad- event. Yeah. It's it like nicely brings everybody together. These events, they need to n- take a major slow. Like The 18 month break will be good. They, well, they're saying 18 month, but then again, like I said, are they going to have a mini character event? Like a clone conspiracy. I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw something the other day where there was a Venom verse. Is it bad that I miss things like Siege and. Age Ultron, things that were just condensable. Like, yeah. even, even Original Sin. Yeah, Original you know? Sin, even though it had its tie-ins, each tie-in was very character-specific. So, it didn't overstretch, you know? I miss that. I just miss it. That I mean, 
I, I just I just want them to condense it, go back to the way things were. I would I, I want that again, and I don't mind them having events, just not major events. Secret Empire is an exception because it is huge and it's reinvented things. Yeah, like this has been a what was it a, like an eighteen did I say eighteen issue like build up before? Yeah. So that's like <laughs> that that's fucking incredible to have. Like I said, I didn't pick up the first issue of Captain America, but it was. Uh, Spoiler of oh, but he's secretly a he- an agent at Hydra. I was like, hold a fucking minute here. Now see if I didn't know that, I'd I'd probably have picked it up now to see everything happen and unfold. But that one revelation done that for me. Like, and if it done it for me, who else did it do for? Like, how many other people went and bought Captain America issue one to be like, hold on, how does this happen? I want to see this unfold, and it is a beautiful almost downfall of a hero because it's not through his own choice that's the thing people seem to think like oh no you've you've done this and you've done that and you're shitting all over everything and you're leading it this way yeah but it's not his own choice like no, it's, it, it's okay the history has been rewritten but how many times have we seen story arcs that have oh this is a timeline uh, Joe Chill's the killer of uh, Batman's parents, then it's Jack Napier, and then, oh, hold on, that's actually the Joker, and then, oh, wait, we're, we're, it's back to Joe Chill, it's, like, things are, in comics are not permanent, okay, how many times has a, ca- has a character died and been reborn? End of. Uh, if everything will come back to the start. I just, I just totally think that Marvel shouldn't feel like they have to explain things. No comic book company in the world, in their right mind, should ever think that they have to explain themselves because they've exactly. changed something. Or you know? go, oh, hold on, keep on reading because you won't be disappointed. No, they should just be like, well, Fucking if you don't if you don't, if you don't, don't like it, don't buy it. End of. But of course they need to make money and at the end yeah. of the day, I don't like them saying people, at the end of the day, people who are genuinely fans should be reading this and going, do you know what? That's no Captain America. At the end of this, Captain America is going to get better. Let it be what it is, yeah. because it, it's truly something special. And honestly, see, to take one of the purest and most loved characters in comic book history, make him evil. Don't even just make him evil. Make him the biggest, baddest evil. That reinvents everything. A character who gives hope is now draining the hope, and it is amazing, you know. And they should totally just. They shouldn't have to feel that they have to explain themselves yeah. at, uh, to anybody because what they're doing with Secret Empire is fucking top notch. Yeah, and I want to see, like, there is a kind of small gap on how people are joining Captain America and Hydra. Like, for instance, in this issue, he's got uh, Taskmaster and I th- can't remember the guy's name, I think it's Jack O'Grady. He, he, he was Ant-Man, but he was a criminal and stuff. But in this, they're calling him Black Ant. In this, they've got them hunting uh, in Atlantis for a fragment of the Cosmic Cube. They want to make sure that nothing can stop Steve being turned good. Or, well, and, I should say, they want to make sure that the Hydra world that was taken from them at the end of World War Two is brought back, which is even more of a fuck you to everyone that's going, no, 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 it's a real Steve Rogers, blah, 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 it's, it's, it's shown that this is the ultimate evil, like the ultimate mastermind, just making sure that he's got every base covered, that was a part of the plan before when Red Skull had Xavier's brain, that was a piece of the puzzle, they needed that, and when that piece was taken out, Steve went, well, he's not useful anymore. Red Skull's no longer useful. He removed that piece. He killed him. And in this, they've got them hunting after uh, fragments of the Cosmic Cube. And who is there to help them? Scarlet Witch. My queen. Like, uh, these are wee things that I want to know. How was she? How did she get turned? Did she willingly do it? Maybe she was scared if they got something over her? You know, like these are pieces to the pu- bigger picture here that is just unfolding very slowly, and there is literally no hope. Like we've got uh, 
if you remember Avengers, I can't remember what Avengers title, but you had Hank Pym come back from space and he's now infected with Ultron. Basically, they're sharing the body. Like, they're sharing the one body. Like well, that's it's, it's, uh, it's like Hank, Pym, Hank Pym's brain and uh, face, but it was like an Ultron's body. They merged to be one being, but it was really Ultron in control. That, we've got this again, which is fucking brutal, because last time we seen him, I think it was on a ship headed towards the sun. So, how the hell does that happen? How the hell does he come back? Is, is, is Ultron going to be a greater threat than Steve? Because Ultron is a bigger threat than Hydra. Well, that's the thing. It's not even just Ultron. It's Hank Pym as well, which is a major... If you know your uh, comic lore and stuff, Hank Pym's one of the original Avengers in that Hank group. Hank Poltron. Hank Poltron. Oh, I uh, I'll I'm go with that. I'm into it. Hank Poltron. Poltron. I'll take that. And again, in this comic, we've got another little scene of Steve helping a woman, but she's well, dead now. He's he's tried to help her get the poison that was put into her and stuff, but as you see, it's all very light blue-hued scenes, which, which is... Almost like a dream. Yeah, almost a dream. And where's Steve walking? Who knows? But he's going somewhere. And uh, this title, James, it finishes with an ultimate revelation. Someone's hunting someone down. Yeah. Yeah. The Punisher. Yes. As an agent of Hydra. Yeah. The Punisher. Yeah. Someone who kills villains, James. I'm angrier that the Punisher is an agent of Hydra than Captain America. Well, this is the thing. Uh, The last page ends on a hitman of Hydra chasing after, trying to find out information, but it turns out to be a Punisher. And he's got this. He's got his skull, but it's. Got it looks fucking badass. Fucking How can you not love that picture right there? It is so cool, but so fucked odd. up because it goes against everything. Uh, he it, again, Steve Rogers, being an agent of Hydra, goes against everything he believed in. Punisher, being an agent of Hydra, goes against everything he believed in. So what happened here? This, like, it gives you the little pieces of information. The 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 good Steve coming back, Hank Pym coming back. Is this Ultron. a throwback to Civil War when the Punisher said to Steve, "I want to help," and Steve says, "No, because you're evil." But the Punisher confessed his love for Captain America yeah. and how much he looked up to him. Is this what this is? Possibly, possibly. He's like, "Oh well, Captain America is an agent of Hydra, and I love Captain America." So, yeah. I'm he it could, he, he, I mean it could be a major throwback to that. Because that's what the Punisher said. I believe in everything you stand on. S- like, stand for. Yeah. So he wouldn't believe what he stands for with Hydra. Yeah. But what what has happened here? Because the Punisher of all people, like like I've said before, is the most human character, really, even though he's a total bastard. So what happens next? Why is the Punisher there? Why is Scarlet Witch helping Steve? Exactly. Is, Scarlet Why? Witch. She's got enough power to rewrite a timeline into House of M. She could change this. So what have they fucking got over her? That is what I want to know. Cause what do it, they have? It's so su- she's so subtly placed. Like she, and it She's not like even a major part of it. She just like finds out. But it's like, why are you working with them? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, why are you doing that? We've got a lovely cover shown of issue four. With your boy Poltron now, mm-hmm. uh, Steve Rogers with his well Hydra shield, classic emblem style shield, going up against the AI. I'm guessing it's an AI Tony Stark because that's what they're doing now. It's a throwback kind of original uh, golden red Iron Man costume. Classic, but obviously, Ultron is going to be the. I mean, advers- he's going to be a big player in it. Well, have a wee read of what the next title entails. The heroes of the underground have discovered the secret to saving Captain America, but to get what they need, they'll have to go through one of their greatest enemies, 
Ultron. Yes, Poltron. Poltron. So, where do we go? Where do we go from here? Where do we go? And if they save Captain America? How is he redeemable? How is he redeemable? Th- this is where I'm thinking with uh, Marvel Generations, which is coming out, which is the classic and current uh, versions of the characters. This might be a like a proper like throw like oh there everything that you've seen previously has been another timeline or something or we change the unit we reset the universe from point which would be what standoff mm-hmm. so I think it's going to be something like that but overall on this issue because of the two revelations two major revelations Scarlet Witch working with Steve Rogers and Punisher at the end. There, like there was a lot of good stuff in this. Like I'm not gonna lie, this I mean, was this is way better than the three previous issues, zero, one, and two. I'd have to go ten out of ten for this. It was one of the best looking comics I've seen. It's dark, gritty, goes well with the story. Uh, it encompasses a lot of different story arcs through happening throughout. You've got the young kind of. You're almost your Young Avengers champions underground. You've got some Black Widow. You've got a bit of Maria Hill. You've got a little bits of Captain America trying to get these cubes. You've got your the, the heroes lost in space. You've got yes. Guardians. You've got like this is a major event. Like usually, and it spans yeah. the universe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? At what's happened on Earth has spanned the universe, and that's what an event should do. Yeah. You know. It it should be you should be seeing people trying to resolve this from other parts of the galaxy. You should be seeing people doing everything they can, and just it's 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 stellar. Oh, I think it's it's consistently good. Like Nick Spencer doing a fantastic job. Uh, for people giving him stick for the story, get a grip. Get a grip. I mean. And this one issue alone, right, you obviously had the revelation that the Punisher... Right, so no one in the universe is going to help Earth. Bad. The Punisher is evil. Bad. Well, the Punisher is more yeah, evil. Yeah, 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 he's, he's bad, bad anyway, James. <laughs> um, Scarlet Witch, one of the strongest characters in the Marvel Universe, yes. is working with Steve. Bad. Major. Ultron is back. Bad. bad. Really bad. The youth, uh, the young Avengers, which we'll call them are being told that they have to find another way of bringing justice because they can't do it the way that it's been done. Bad. Because, you know, everything has just drained of hope. And just when you think things are gone well, oh, look, Ultron's back. Oh, look, the Punisher's on Steve's side. Oh, look, Scarlet Witch is there. Just give up hope. Yeah. Abandon hope with this book because this is, this is, this is new. You've not seen anything like this. This is very different, and it's kind of special. It is very special. And speaking of special, we're now going on to our classic throwback series of graphic novels, James. Well, yes. And this month was your choice, you little diva. Mm. You get your way all the time, except every other month, because that's my choice. Exactly. It's not like I'm sitting here, well, no, I want to go first, please. Well, you got to go first this time, okay? Next time. I run the show. My classic book that I'm going to um, encourage to you. Oh. Uh, I finished season two of Lucifer yesterday. And then uh, I thought to myself. Ah, Lucy. And then I thought to myself, do you know what? People should be reading the original Lucifer. Now, the original Lucifer is a very, very different kettle of fish. The Lucifer TV show is a crime audit TV show. It's, you know, Lucifer wants to help solve cases and punish naughty people because he's the devil. But the book and the show do have a lot in common. The devil has left hell because he doesn't want to run it anymore. He goes to Los Angeles. He opens a nightclub called Lux. He has a bar. He has Mazakin, who's his, you know, his sort of demon who does everything for him. Differences between the characters, Mazakin in the show is actually more vocal. She can speak English. Uh, in the book, she doesn't. She speaks an ancient language, and you're just there to just assume what she's saying. Lucifer uh, looked more like David Bowie. Lucifer in the original Vertical books uh, is a spin off from Sandman. 
uh, written by the man himself, Neil Gaiman. And Lucifer is a spin-off series that's basically, as it says in the tin, the devil gets bored of ruling hell, decides to go to Earth, and when he goes to Earth, God is basically trying to get him back to hell because when there's no one ruling hell, shit goes down. So I'm going to recommend to you graphic novel, yes. vol- Lucifer, volume one, Devil in the Gateway. It is such an interesting book. It is very different. You're seeing Lucifer at the start and he's in Lux and he's having a drink and he's told that somebody's here to see him and it's one of his angel brothers who's came to see him and says that God wants you to do this job. Do this job. And Lucifer's like, mm, right, okay. But natural trademark Lucifer, well, I'll do it if you give me something in return. So he asks for something in return. You don't initially find out what it is. But he, he goes and do it and then as he goes to do that job, he finds a young girl. Uh, who, she's a teenager, and her brother has got uh, a really... Now, th- the stories in Lucifer are actually very, very real. Uh, and one of my favourites in the book is the story of the young girl who wished that her disabled brother was dead. Oh. That sounds bad that I enjoy oh, that, that story. But that's, that's, a, that's a hell yeah uh, story right there. No. There's subtle punishment in here. This is the only story I'm going to tell you about in it because there's multiple stories in each graphic novel, but this is a stellar story. Basically, the dad wants the son to live because he feels he's got a right to live, but he can't do anything. He has to be cared for around the clock. So when the dad goes to work, he says to his daughter, can you look after him? And she basically says, oh, I wish he was dead. She invites her friend round and they're having a good time. The brother takes a kind of seizure and dies. <laughs> when she comes into contact with Lucifer, Lucifer says, well, I'll help you. You can come with me and we'll, we'll sort this out. And as they go on, like, she's, like, you know, Lucifer says, right, we have to go to this place because he's gone there to do the job for God anyway. So he's like, right, okay, you come with me. Through through the book, he's talking to her and he's saying, well, you know, if you wish for him to be dead, he's dead, but you got what you wanted. What more could you wish for? Yeah. And she's like, no, I didn't actually want him dead. And she gets really upset. It's a really emotional story. And just before the climax of the story, Lucifer says to her, where we're about to go is your chance to save your brother. This is your chance to bring your brother back. And they find out that there's a demon that's escaped hell who grants, who feeds off um, sadness and pain and anger and it grants wishes to people so that they'll have that response so when it grants the wish that demon can then feed off her emotional yeah. anxiety and stuff lucifer has a, a sparring competition sort of uh, in word with them and then decides well do you know what this isn't my problem you deal with it now lucifer beforehand has said we'll need to destroy like i'll i'll help you but we need to dis- we need to to, to sort this out. We need to destroy this this demon. We need to send him back to hell. We do that, and you do what you've got to do right, you'll get your brother back. Doesn't tell her what she needs to do, though, because that would be advantageous of Lucifer, wouldn't it? And basically, Lucifer says, this thing is listening to you. It will grant whatever wish you want. And she says, well, I wish this demon was back in hell, and the demon goes back to hell. Happy ending, right? Well, she turns around to Lucifer and says, right, so when can I get my brother back? And he's like, oh, you can't. I told you that you could wish for anything and you wish to send that demon back to hell. So now that that demon's back in hell, it's not going to grant your wish. Your brother's dead and you're to blame. And then he walks away and leaves her. Classic Lucifer. Lucifer is a character who will get what he wants. Is not to be liked, clearly. No, no. I don't believe that. He's a, he's the puni- he's the punisher. He is the man who punishes bad people. And was she right to wish her brother dead? No. Now, she didn't know what was going to happen. But her dad specifically says to her, can you look after him while I go to work? She was like, no, I'm going to invite my pal around. He takes a seizure. Wishes he was dead. He dies. That is her fault. And the point of the story is that, you know, Lucifer isn't there to grant favours on the basis of, I want that, so I want it, and I'll sell my soul to the devil for it. She made that wish, and he gave her an opportunity. 
he did say, you do all this, you do it, you do it right, you'll get your brother back. But instead, she let anger take over, she done it her way, and what was Lucifer to do? He's not, he, he doesn't have to intervene, you know? That's why I really love this graphic novel. It is stellar in terms of how Lucifer subliminally tricks people to get what he wants, but the option to get what they want is there. And I think that that's definitely something that I would recommend. If you like Sandman, you'll love Lucifer. How's the artwork in it? The artwork in it's, I mean, <sighs> it's very Sandman. It's pretty much the same artwork as Sandman. Uh, printed on sort of like actual sort of paper. Paper, not like newspaper paper yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Not, you know, y- your glossy paper. Yeah. Very old style. But it fits it, it suits it, it's great. The storytelling in it's superb. You slowly do start to like Lucifer, even though he's an evil bastard. You do, because at the end of the day, you find out that his story is really, he's angry. He's angry that God makes him out to be the villain. He didn't want to be cast down to hell. He didn't want to be the great evil that everyone's scared of. And he certainly doesn't like it when people say, oh, the devil made me do it. Because at the end of the day, they have their own choices. Yeah. And that's why he wants to live his own life, because he doesn't want to be that evil person. He's not, really, when you think about it. He does what he has to do, and that's the end of it. And I think Lucifer is a fantastic character. The TV show certainly paints him in that. You know, there's parts of the TV show that really take for the comic books. Like, there's a whole speech he gives about what how much he hates it when people blame him for the evil that they do. And it's taken right from the comic book. Pa- like, panel for panel, it's taken from it. Despi- the scene's different because it's Sandman he talks to in the comic. Yeah. Whereas in the show he talks to the, his therapist about it because he's, he's got a therapist because... He wants to talk about how he's feeling and stuff like that, but the therapist is like, "Oh my god, like you're actually not the devil." Like, <laughs> you know, she doesn't <laughs> believe him at first. She thinks he's just speaking in metaphors, but it's a good balance that this that the, the devil himself is actually not actually as evil as you think he is. He's just sick of being played out as the villain. <laughs> so it's a really nice story in there, and the book doesn't quite go into as much detail in it. Yeah, because Lucifer's very much somebody who just moves on, and uh, how the book is done. It, there's, there's really subtle humour, really great storytelling. I love the artwork, personally. It is stellar, and I think that's your classic book for the month. Get reading Lucifer. You can even read DC's newly released ones that were sort of released after the show, you know, if you want the more modern take on them, but the old stuff, you can't beat the old stuff. Some cool. of the old stuff is cracking. Uh, what do you rate it, mate? Oh, I've got, I'm a bit biased, because I really like Lucifer. You Any like bad guys? Mm, I do. Riddler? Well, okay. Joker. Wee bit of Joker. Lucifer's not a bad guy. But he's, uh, he's, he's morally... Well, he's a necessary evil. He's a necessary evil and he's morally neutral. He punishes people who deserve to be punished. I can get behind that. You deserve to be punished, you're getting punished. Do you know what I mean? Like, Used that before. <laughs> <laughs> As an excuse <laughs> for the bedroom. <laughs> Naughty. But, yeah. I, I'm biased to Lucifer, mate. I'm going cool. to g- I, I give the Lucifer books tens all yeah. Nice. Just because it's exactly what I want in the book. You know, great storytelling. Not necessarily a lot of action, but when the action's there it's good. So definitely I'd give uh, Sandman as well. Sandman and Lucifer. But Lucifer's he's my wee bias. I like him. Nice. Nice. Fair but on that though, I think we're done. Yes, we are done for today. Uh you can you can you can fi- <laughs> finish because uh after last time, you got a little bit of stick. Oh, yeah, well, a little bit. A lot of stick. Well, we've come at the end of another show. We hope that you enjoy any of the comics that we've spoken about today. Let us know what your comic of the month was, naturally. And remember to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You can listen to this on SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. And, yeah, rate, review, and subscribe. Let us know how we can do better. Let us know what you want us to review. And we'll see you in a fortnight. Yes. Thank you very much, guys, and geek out!